if you want to think about this from a spiritual aspect, everything that you ever struggle with or will struggle with is from you and what you have chosen to open up yourself to. So oftentimes what people do, you open up yourself to something that's dishonorable, it's wicked, it's wrong. Then in the future, when you want to serve God, that's the very thing that battles you. That's the very thing that comes up and creates stumbling blocks. Your life is really the way that you are choosing to make it today. Even when you get um, depressed, discouraged, or even you get disobedient or defiant, these are all things that you're opening up yourself to. So here's the thing. There's a lot of times where you might be bored in the time that you're in. While you're bored, you'll open up yourself to something that's going to destroy you. When you want to change that thing and you want to live right before the Lord, now that is the very thing that's bothering you. That's the very thing that's causing issues with your mind. That's the very thing that's making you stumble. But it's all you. So let me just show you this. A toddler at two years old. No, let me even go further back. A two-week-old baby is not struggling with murder nor suicide. They struggle with murder and suicide when they get information. So they're not struggling with murder or suicide because they don't have that information revealed to them. The only information they get revealed to them is milk, breasts, which is the location of milk. Diapers change. That's all the information. So you notice their life is not being influenced by murder. Suicide, because they don't have that information inside of them. Now, you fast forward, they might turn eight years old. They learn about murder. They learn about uh, suicide. Now it becomes a temptation. Now they start pitting a rope around their neck to see how long they can hold it. And, and then they pull the rope off the neck. I know it sounds cruel, but you need to understand what I'm telling you. This is real because this actually happens. There's little children that are committing suicide after they go to school. Because uh, let me just say this here. Truth be told, Holy Spirit really never meant for children to go to school. <laughs> never meant for children to go to school. That's why when children go to school, it's the baddest of things that happen when they go to school. They start getting into sexual stuff, start getting into drug stuff. They never meant for children to go to school. Children were supposed to be raised by their parents. But see, me and you both know that parents are not even in the blessing for that to happen. Parents are trying to make money because you had the child at the wrong time. You should have had the money, then had the child. But you ain't going to have the child, you ain't got the money. You're trying to make the money, now it messed up with how the child get raised. Are you listening to me? So, so things don't be going the right way because of sin. And then when it's not going the right way, then things start going left. It's not happening the way that it was supposed to go because it didn't start off the way it was supposed to go. And so thereby the Lord will show you how to cope with the way that it is going. He'll show you. He'll show you. And then um, uh, in most cases, when you have a child, you might have uh, the child's parents that is not saved. So for peace sake, you'll have to let things be a certain way because it'll cause a war zone trying to get that other parent to be in synchrony with what the Lord telling you. So the Lord, in some cases, will make adjustments, give you the wisdom of a serpent just to deal with the thing, but still impart the seeds of wisdom into the child when they're in your presence. 
things happen like that. But what I'm saying to you is this. You notice the two-week-year-old child is not struggling with murder and they're not struggling with lust. They're two weeks old. That information is not revealed to them. All of your sins are connected to information that you opened up yourself to. You opened up yourself to it. If you had no idea about it, you would have never did it. So here's what I want to bring your attention to this. What information are you opening up yourself to today? When you're bored. Because the minute that you get focused and you get sanctified, you're going to have to deal with what you opened up yourself to when you wasn't sanctified. I hope you hear what I'm saying. What you open up yourself to when you're angry, you're going to have to face that when you're calm. What you open up yourself to when you're dishonorable, you're going to have to face that when you're honorable. What you open up yourself to when you're anxious, you're going to have to face that when you're patient. And I'm telling you, if you want your life to be easier, stop giving place to evil in evil times. In evil times, when times are evil, you just submit to the evil. But then when times are, are, are now you're back focused, you're back concentrated, you're back sanctified. Now you're dealing with the things that you open up yourself to when you wasn't focused, when you was distracted. Let me tell you this. Do you know why a lot of people have issues with submission? Because they opened up their self to rebellion. So when they try to submit, they still got to confront all of the elements and all the qualities that they open up their self to in rebellion. And it's not easy for you just to submit yourself and disregard everything that your body memory has used to do in a situation. It has always been that you are the one controlling what you struggle with, what you master, what you focus on what you are, 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 are perfected in and what your imperf imperf imp the imperfections are of your person. It's all decided by you. All the flaws that somebody say that they have, these are not flaws that you just, oh, I have this flaw. No, no, no. This is the information that you open up yourself to. Let me, let me show you this. Say somebody is hungry right now. They go to a corner store. They put some chips in their bag and they walk out the store and nobody detects it. The owner doesn't detect it. They walk out, no police stop them. They go home, they don't go to jail. They eat the chips at home. Whenever they have a situation where they don't have the right amount of money or they want to get something without paying for it, that's what they're going to revisit. I walked out, I didn't get stopped by the cops, Nobody hindered me. That's what's in their memory. So when they even get a lot of money, even though they have the money, they may not want to spend that money on that. They'll go and put it inside of their pocket because they don't want to spend the money on it. It's inside of them because that's what they opened up their self to. You're always opening up yourself to something. It could be good or evil all the time. There are people, when you understand the story of Daniel, Daniel opened up himself to excellence, which means that he went further and further in good deeds. That's what it means. He went further and further in submission, further and further into righteousness, into right ways, into right words, into right reactions. You notice, even though the king passed the law, he never went to the king and said, you stupid, man. Why would you pass that law without praying to God? You should have asked God before you did it. You notice he don't do none of that. You know why? Because he has the spirit of excellence, which means that this is what he opened up himself to, God reactions. He opened up himself to God words. He opened up himself to God's behavior and God's counsel. So the way that God will counsel him on how he should deal with the thing, that's what Daniel opened up himself to. So when he gets in hostile situation, he's not becoming hostile. When he gets into dark situations, he's not becoming dark. 
because he only opened up himself to what? Excellence. The same way with Joseph. Joseph only opened up himself to integrity. So he knows that the boss is not home and the boss entrusted him with his goods. And Potiphar, this is his wife. He says, I'm not going to sleep with you. The woman then prepared the way for him to sleep with her. She done both, both uh, gloated around him. She done presented herself as a living sacrifice. <laughs> she done did everything possible to show that she was willing and obedient. And Joseph still kept what? The standard. Because that's what he only opened up himself to. He opened up himself to integrity. So unfaithfulness and lies and trickery, he could not walk in it. Because that's not what he opened up himself to. I want you to catch this for the rest of your life. There's going to be times where you're angry. Not because you're anointed, you're going to get angry. And sometimes the anger is not from God. There's going to be times where you get offended. The offense is not from God. There's going to be times where you get in, into disagreement and the disagreement is not from God. What you do in those moments are very important because if you get angry and you start to speak, you start to act, these are things that you're registering in your soul. So in the time frame, where you want to be focused and righteous and obedient. You want to be calm and wise. You want to have a sound mind. Those things that you did when you was angry is what's going to be registered in that moment where you're sound, where you're mature. And those things are going to fight you. And Satan not going to be ignorant Concerning that very moment, Satan going to present those things before you again. So right now, say you're a young person, right? Or, or you're an older person. Say you get horny. Let me, let me deal with this. Say you get horny. How you deal with your horniness, you go watch something. You go buy a video. You go do something on your phone. Okay. The next time you get horny, that's going to be the solution to your horniness. Not going to the Lord and not doing the right thing with how you feel. Now, I want you to hear this. Most times when people get horny, they get anxious. Anxiety is a realm where you don't have dominion over your flesh. Anxiety is a realm that people operate in when things that you opened up yourself to in the past revisit you in the present when you're trying to do right. So that's why we have so many people saying, I don't know how to stop doing this. No, no, no. You're in the realm of anxiety and in anxiety, you can't stop doing anything because anxiety is a place that God told you was forbidden through Apostle Paul. Be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. Even your sexuality, be anxious for nothing. So when you are a person that has a history, that when you want to do something, you go and do it. Anxiety is always going to be your tempting place. Where Satan going to tell you, this is how we handle how we feel. This is how we handle our emotions. This is how we handle our offenses, our offenses. If we're offended, if we're upset, if we're tired, if we're angry, if we're horny, this is how we deal with it. And I, I, I want you to see this. The more you become wise and understanding, you'll use discretion. And here's the blessing of discretion. You have less things that the devil will be able to throw at you when you're walking right. When you're walking upright. When you're walking in truth and righteousness, there's less things. So, so you, you'll hear a man talking about his dominion and then you might look at him and say, no, we all not perfect. We all got something that we're battling with. But see, understand that not everybody has a history of opening up themselves 
to the things that you have opened up yourself to. So you can't really talk for them because how you dealt with the horniness or how you dealt with the anger, or how you dealt with the offense is not the same way that they dealt with it. So when they talk from dominion, you might say, no, 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 nah, that, nah, that person, they capping, they, they do, they doing the most. No, we all got that thing. We all got that thing. Yeah. We all have the confrontation with that level of information, but we all don't have the same reaction to it. So if my muscle memory don't know how to do what you did, I'm not going to have the same temptation as you. So when you talk about, oh, no, 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 you can't say that you're perfect here because I, I do this. But yeah, yeah, yeah. We all can confront that segment of life, but we all don't have the same reaction. If you go forward in the future of Moses, when he opens up himself to strike the rock, that's what's in his muscle memory. That is what he registered in his reaction. So now he has created a struggle. That's why God told him you're not entering into your promised land. It's not that God is being unright or unfair. God knows you have just registered something that I hate. I don't want you as a leader showing people how to defy my instruction. You embarrass me. I needed you to show forth the reaction that was different from them. You synchronize with their reaction. So therefore, I have to alienate you from the promise. The same with Adam. The Bible said God drove them out of the garden. They had registered that they was going to follow their flesh now. This is what their future will consist of. That when God say, don't touch this orange, they're going to try to touch the orange. Because they already have in their muscle memory, you told me not to touch the tree. You told me, don't eat of this tree. But I done. Now, now man smoking the tree. Now man smoking the tree and saying God made the tree. This how far we have got. This how far we have got. This what's going on now. Because this is what you opened up yourself to. Now when you hear don't touch this, you already got in your memory registered. I already heard that one time and I still did it. This is what goes on with perpetual sin in your life. And what I'm telling you is that why the Lord on purpose, he give you times apart from people and he sanctify you and he give you a chance to rekindle your love for him and be restored in your soul. And your soul need to be healed. Your soul need to be healed so that you can stop the memory of your rebellion in the past because that's what you're going to do the next time you're tested, what you did the last time you was tested. This is what you're gonna do the next time. That's why people, you ever, you ever understand that you're repeating the same decision. It might be six months later, but you're repeating the same decision. It might be 10 months later, but you're repeating the same decision. You're repeating the same decision. You're repeating the same decision. Let me help some of you all. And please, let me do this to save you so that you don't cause damnation to your soul. Please don't come up to me and start giving accolades to yourself or how you faithful to me and you, you. You know, I watch your videos and I'm so connected with you, prophet. And I'm so, I'm so connected and I'm here for you and I love you. Don't tell me that BS. And you know that you're not faithful to me. You have five prophets that you listen to. You have six people that you go for inspiration, motivation. Don't come tell me that. Just be quiet. All right. That will save you a lot of damnation. Don't come lie to me because I'm a seer. You understand? And I can see. I don't want I don't like when people 
they come and they try to present themselves with a resume like you, like you don't be understanding that God, the Bible said the eye of the Lord is going to and fro the earth, watching over the good and the evil. So here's another point I want to draw. Be honest about who you are. Don't present yourself to be something that you're not. Don't come in my face and tell me that. I don't want to look at you like you're stupid. So be honest, okay? Don't come tell me something that I want to hear. And I know the truth about you. I know the truth about you. Don't come act like you so loyal and you so faithful and you so submissive. Because you're not. And saints, I'm going to tell you like this here. Because I, I've been with Dr. Mike Murdoch for all these years. Um, and, and no matter what happened to him, if he looked like he's sick, if he looked like... And the thing could appear like it's like, okay, it, all right, this is a time for me to depart from him because things are like it's going bad. For No, no, no. For a person that is faithful to another person that is divinely assigned in the schedule, in the books written for my life, that Dr. Mike Murdoch was supposed to be a part of my story and I was supposed to honor him and respect him and be nice to him and never disrespect him and talk to him any type of way. We never got into no argument. We'll never get into no argument because an argument is two-sided. I never got into an argument with him because I didn't open up myself to dishonor. When you open up yourself to dishonor, then you then you have the boldness to argue with somebody you're not supposed to argue with. You have the boldness to talk to somebody any type of way that you're not supposed to be talking to them. That's what that's what man has been doing. They open up themselves to evil. They open up themselves to the wrong words. But I never did that. So let me let me just tell you, you, you know how you see me sometimes? I might say jackass. I might say nigga. I don't say that in front of Dr. Murdoch. You know why? Because you never use strong words in the presence of your leader. I respect him. So, so Dr. Murdoch say jackass, but I'm not going to sit there and say, yeah, Dr. Murdoch, they some jackasses. I'm not going to say that because I'm not going to disrespect him by using strong words in his presence. Those words, let me help you understand. These, no, no, I, I'll talk about that at the meeting. Never mind. I'll talk about that at the Welcome Holy Spirit Fire Conference. <laughs> you never use strong words in the presence of your leader. You're not allowed to say ass around your leader. You're not allowed to say uh uh, jackass around your leader. You're not allowed to do that. Because these words are dominion words. These are words that are strong words. They're intense words. They're fierce words. And if you respect somebody, you won't say that around them while they're around. If you respect their authority. All right. Secondarily. Um, Dr. Murdoch I've been faithful to him. So when I see him, if I tell him, Dr. Murdoch, I, I've been staying afloat with you. I've been, I've been uh, marveling at what you're teaching. I've been, that's me. I can legitimately say that without trickery or falsehood. You see what I'm saying? So I'm just, I'm just helping y'all. When y'all come to Welcome Holy Spirit Fire Conference, if I come meet with you, please, don't come in my face and tell me no lies. <laughs> Cause we already nah, I ain't gonna say that. <clears throat> All right, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> 